Hey, Jessica here. Before you listen to this episode, I just wanted to say a quick hello and let you know that Dave and I continue to do this podcast. It's just at a very slow pace. Our goal is to have authentic conversations with each guest and then be able to share those valuable insights with you. That's how we've learned and grown our businesses, and we want to do the same for you. If there's a certain topic or subject that you would love Dave and I to talk about or cover, let me know. You can email me directly at jessica at squareoneshow.com. Now, back to the show. So I kind of take this story and a point thing into coaching and like, tell me your story and let's work together to find your point in a sense, your purpose. How are we beginning to see things connecting and really getting to the root of, okay, what is it about certain things that you did connect with or didn't connect with and why? This is The Square One Show. Well, hey, we have Andy Kerr with us again today. Hey, Andy, how are you? I'm doing uh, fantastic. Thank you. And my co-host, Dave. Hey. Hi. Hi, Dave. Hello, Andy. Andrew. Andrew. So, Andy, we had you on the show quite a few episodes mm-hmm. ago at uh, this point. You were one yeah. of our first guests, actually. So. Oh, really? Yes. You, oh. you yeah. actually recorded in our studio when we lived in Edinburgh. Yeah. Oh, uh, Yes. Yes, that was a uh, that was a few uh, months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> times a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I think at that point we had talked about your coaching business and how you got into coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a John Maxwell team coach. You're mm-hmm. also the chaplain at the Erie City Mission. Yes, and you that's keep, still keep true. going. You're also yeah. So I also have a, a real estate uh, property, a rental property business with a friend. Which that's uh, new since we've chatted. Uh huh. So, and I don't know. I think we had we were doing it. We just didn't talk about it uh, because yeah. it was oh, pretty sorry. new. Yeah. Uh, but we have uh, fifteen units. Now it's an empire building. That's a, it's a very <laughs> tiny empire, but uh, it, it all kind of stems around the same uh, idea and purpose for which I feel like I'm here. Uh, in my city to to accomplish, and it has to do with helping people come out of poverty uh, and uh, making an impact on our city and its economy. Uh, and so, this is about the rental property business is about providing safe, affordable housing for people that want to do something great with their lives. Yeah, that's awesome. Don't you also you provide some job opportunities too with that as well, right? Uh, we have, yes, we do. Uh, and we're trying to work with, we have individuals uh, that come out of our program at the Erie City Mission. Our New Life program is an addiction recovery program. And uh, a lot of the services that um, we use as far as uh, construction, electric, uh, HVAC, uh, are guys that have uh, done those things in the past. Uh, and then stopped doing them because of their addiction and have started back into those businesses uh, in recovery and are doing fantastic. And we're using them uh, as part of our workforce to help us do what we're doing. That's awesome. So, Andy, what I've always appreciated about you is you've always just figured things out as you go, right? You kind of yes. dive in and you connect with people. Mm-hmm. And I know at one point you really struggled with Okay, what is what is my life? What am I doing? Right. <laughs> yeah. So can you take us kind of back a little bit and talk about how did you get to where you are now when you are full of purpose and you're not only doing one thing that achieves your purpose, you're doing like multiple things. So I'm doing multiple things, but they don't necessarily all point to one purpose. You know, I'm still <laughs> figuring that out. So how can you help someone listening? Um, how would you walk them through, okay, how do I find my purpose? And then how do yeah. I align my goals to meet that purpose? Uh, you know, it, it is, a, it is a process and it's been a long process for me. And I think it's a lifelong process if you want to become more purposeful, uh, and you have a lot of varying interests. You know, I always talk about the fact that I struggle with attention deficit, but I think we live in a sort of a, you know, an ADD culture in a sense that there's a, so many things to choose from and so many good options out there that are interesting. And if you're a normal human being, you're probably interested in more than one specific thing. And, you know, there's 
do they connect, you know, just because we're interested in it, should it be something we do? So uh, when I started at, at the mission uh, as chaplain, um, I came there specifically because I was getting more clear on my purpose. And that happened by me hiring a life coach, 2011, uh, 2012, a uh, guy named Dave Kraft, phenomenal dude. Uh, and like he is about to turn 80 years old and the guy is, uh, just amazing. He is sharp as a tack and he is brilliant and he's kind of tough on me. <laughs> so such a need. Which is probably, yes. Which but you is haven't fired him. <laughs> oh no, no, gosh. Uh, I am thinking about, I was like, Dave, he was talking, he's writing a book, uh, another book. Wow. And it's it's a leader on his last lap. And I was like, Dave, that's sad. He's like, well, he's like, I'm 80. <laughs> yeah. Let's face the reality like, here. Yeah. I said, well, you can't go yet. I still need you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was a process of getting clear on wanting to make an impact in the issues of poverty in the city of Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, where I live. Uh, we actually then moved to Erie from a uh, neighboring town. And uh, as I came to the mission, I realized a little bit more what it took to make an impact. So I went part time at the mission uh, to start my leadership development business, because if you want to impact a city, you have to impact the leaders. Uh, and so I kind of kept one foot in working with people in poverty and stepped out to help people uh, that are in leadership that can have an impact. And then we started the rental property business as one more piece of the focus. So my, I think it's a process you have to figure it out, but you have to be intentional about getting rid of things that don't move you towards the purpose. And I, I mean, I've had a lot of advice and a lot of encouragement from other people. You're doing too many things. I don't know if you've, you guys have ever heard that. No, we may uh, have told you that before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, uh, it was true. I mean, I put on, I put all the things I was doing on little cards and I put them up on a board and I looked at it and I said, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> How am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not well. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> right. I'm a machine. Yes. Uh, not and, functioning and, well machine. Right. Right. A, a clumsy machine that doesn't work at accomplishing anything. <laughs> right. Um, which is a really poor machine if you've yeah. ever had one. It's a broken right. machine. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I, in one, in, one specific example, I started a community garden uh, for the city mission. Uh, great idea. Three o'clock in the morning, saw a TED talk on community gardens <laughs> <laughs> and and said, I'm going to do that. And then I did it. And I had a group of people and we got the plot of ground for a dollar from the city. Uh, it was awesome. We, had, we made raised beds. We got all the stuff. We got a shed donated and all the tools and we did it. And then uh, everybody disappeared. And then I was doing it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, and I suck at gardening. So, and I don't like it. Right. <laughs> I like the idea of people having food that they need. And so the mission ended up giving the garden, uh, away to an organization called the sisters of St. Joseph in Erie, who are amazing at community gardening. Hmm. Uh, and no longer did I have to do that. And now the garden is amazing. The whole neighborhood's involved. Uh, it looks amazing. It produces food for everybody that has pitched in, and it looks fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and that, and it got better because I decided that I'm not good at it that, and I need to give it away. But it also, I'm good at, it I'm all, good at starting things. Yeah, <laughs> but it also wouldn't have started if you hadn't taken that initiative too, though, right? So it's not right. necessarily a failure. You still initiated Correct. it, but you delegated it. I right. guess, and yeah. by default. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't they have more than one now, too? Like, this idea grew and multiplied, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. And they, Well, and they had more to begin with, um, and they've had more since. Um, and they, yeah, they definitely took it to a next level. And, that, and see, that whole experience, I, I've got this, you know, this uh, competing 
uh, understanding of how you find your purpose. And one of them is trying stuff to see if you like it, if it makes sense and that you find value in it and, and you're good at it. And so you have to try stuff, but then you have to quit stuff in order to figure out, quit the bad stuff and keep the good stuff. And so uh, that's been my whole process in my life. That's how I learn. That's how, like, I try a bunch of stuff, but you have to stop doing some things in order to keep doing the right things. And that I've had to be very intentional about unloading stuff so that I could get better at the things that I was going to keep. And that's an example. And I'm good at starting things. So I don't mind getting a team together, getting things and making it happen and then giving it away. Yeah. yeah but the sustainability part is yes. what's really challenging. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there's a, there's, a, there's a great book by Seth Godin mm-hmm. called The Dip. And The Dip is exactly that. How do you stick with things when they get when you start it and it starts to get a little worse? Um, people usually give up before the return comes. But some people get stuck in what they call a cul-de-sac, which is where you're just keep doing the same thing over and over and again. And it's not getting any better. And you're just stuck in that pattern. And it feels very similar to a dip, but the outcomes are very different. And you have to decide what to quit and what to, you know, sustain. Yeah. That's awesome. It's great. Great little book. Yeah. And one of those things that you started and or have done in the past is you started a, I guess, a video series uh, called Story in a Point. And then you mm-hmm. just recently turned that into a book. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, and you guys know because we have some history, but I, I don't feel like I'm very creative in how I name things. <laughs> and uh, I just call them what they are. Right. And uh, I was trying to think of like I wanted to start putting out these stories that I used that I have used in talks and leadership talks. And when I was doing sermons and they're just stories from my life that I've used to make a point. And I I thought, well, what should I call these videos? And so I just called it a, a story and a point uh, because that's what it was. And uh, I had enough of them that my wife was telling me you should make these into a book uh and she came up with the the subtitle of the book finding meaning in everyday life Mm -hmm. and uh which is a yeah and it's it perfectly describes what we were trying to do with the book and it's a collection of 12 stories with a point to each and it's been fun you know i wrote it with uh our friend paul mccosco uh, who is a fantastic writer and helped me turn the video content into a readable version of each of the stories. Mm-hmm. Yes, Paul is multi-talented. He's editing the yes. show, too, actually. Yeah. And we're going to have Paul on the show. Oh, great. As well. So we're looking forward That's to that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so, you know, he, we did a lot of work together. Uh, he was, uh, we were kind of partners in in ministry. And then uh, he and his family moved to Texas and we stayed in Pennsylvania and it's been a great way for us to stay connected. Uh, You know, doing work with people you love to work with is super important in life uh, as far as happiness and meaning and purpose goes. Um, And Paul is one of those people. We just have a blast. And so it's, it was, it's been a great project to do together and stay connected, even though we're far apart. Yeah. Well, Andy, can you, is there a certain story that sticks out to you that uh, you can tell Uh, from the book? Yeah. Uh, So a a lot of the the different stories in the book, uh, you know, have have, uh, touched me in different ways and and helped. And and sometimes I'll use the same story with different, a different point. But the the one that stands out to me right now, because I was just looking at it uh, prior to jumping on uh, this with you, is the story about the spider and the the title is a spider and forgiveness. And Mm. I was in my garage one day and in our region of the world, there aren't spiders that are very big. At least I didn't think so. Uh, And when I went out in my garage the one day uh, I saw this spider that was so huge, like it looked misplaced. And it was sitting in the middle of our garage and it was alive and it was 
crawling and it was massive like scary massive and i thought to myself for a second i i i should step on it but then i thought it was it was so big that if i stepped on it it would just like squish and splat everywhere and that it would maybe i would slip in it and it would be really bad yes so yeah so i i went inside and i thought i'm going to trap this thing uh and I went inside and got one of those ice cream containers that are clear plastic. I forget the name of the kind of ice cream it is, uh, but it has a screw on top, which I thought was very important. Mm-hmm. And I went in and grabbed it. And my wife was like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, yeah, nothing. <laughs> I don't want to tell you because if you knew what was in our garage, we, we would move. <laughs> so I, I, I took this thing and I put it over top of the spider and it jumped and like oh. hit the top, like jumped at me as though it was trying. <laughs> and trying I, to eat you. Uh, yes. And I almost, I almost peed. It was like, <laughs> so like, I hate spiders. Maybe I it just really so liked much. ice cream. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it was mad that there was none. Left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I did the thing where I get the piece of paper and slide it under and turn it over and then get the <laughs> lid on it. And, and, I'm looking at this thing and it's taking up the entire bottom of this container and it just looks nasty and mean. And I was like, what the heck is this spider? I did not think that they existed. So I happen to live by the Erie zoo. Mm. And, uh, you know, so I thought, well, maybe it escaped. (laughs) Of course. That's logical. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, as any normal human being would do, I took it there. I went down there and I'm like, maybe they can identify this thing (laughs) with me and put it back in its cage because it's ridiculously big. And uh, I went down there and I, you know, I, I pulled out. So I caused a big stir, right? Because there's at this time, there's nothing going on in the zoo. It's the middle of the day. Nobody's there. The monkeys are sleeping. Yeah. Right. Everybody's sleeping, even like some of the workers (laughs) and the, the kids at the, check-in station are like oh my gosh that's crazy and so they get they get one of the people uh like the zookeeper (laughs) whatever and bring them out and they say it's a wolf spider and they're common in this area i'm like there are more of these (laughs) and they're coming after you (laughs) and i was like well maybe you could take it so like they took it for me (laughs) um and I was I was thinking about the, this idea and the point of the story became the fact that sometimes there are are things in our life that we don't expect that creep into our lives. And um, and if you find it, if you become aware of it, it's important to remove it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and oftentimes, you know, it's things like uh, hurts or resentments. Um, unforgiveness uh, is what I focused on in the story, uh, because if you don't, it will multiply and it will grow. And I was thinking about the spider and I, there's no way I would ever want that thing to multiply in my house. <laughs> and that is the st- That's the beginning of like a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it, and if we let them linger, they will multiply. And so, Things like resentments and and unforgiveness in your life, if you do not um, do something about it, it will grow, it will multiply, and you will have your own version of a horror movie in your life. Take it, deal with it, uh, forgive, uh, and keep the small things small, and life works better. And that goes for work, it goes for marriages, it goes for family relationships, uh, uh, every aspect of your life to take those as soon as you're aware of them and remove them and get rid of them and get them out of your life. I love it. Thanks, Andy, for sharing the story. That's yeah, awesome. And I never want to see a wolf spider. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to see another one. No. <laughs> no, thank you. I want to see it. You didn't take any pictures of it, did you? <laughs> I absolutely. I will send one to you. Yes. I have Aww. one. Yeah. Hey. It is super creepy. Good. <laughs> The boys are like that. So, Andy, how did you come to this conclusion about um, the leadership that you've been through and all the teaching and preaching that you've done and helping people? Where do you think that stems from? 
Where do you think you get that passion yeah. from? Well, you know, I, I, I think it comes from my, my family. I, you know, I was contemplating this because um, I, I found out when I, when I told my mom that I was going to be the chaplain at the Erie City Mission, Erie City Mission, she started uh, to tear up. And this, her story, his, her story is that way back when she was six years old, her aunt was bringing her to that city mission. Her aunt did like uh, piano songs and stuff at lunchtime when they served the free lunch to people that were struggling in poverty. And the message was given. And my mom said she responded to the preacher's message like every time she was there uh, <laughs> at age six. And then as an adult, when we were kids, she volunteered at the Erie City Mission. And my mom has always been uh, somebody that wanted to help, to give back, to serve, uh, and to share, you know, her love with other people. And it's kind of built in and it kind of modeled to me. And, you know, when I decided I wanted to uh, go from teaching and then into ministry and then into coaching that same desire to help people help them find their purpose help people to become everything that they were created to be uh, has has been with me for a long time and I attribute that to uh, both of my parents uh, my, my mom specifically in the area of you know serving and helping those that are struggling in poverty yeah and I, it's interesting because I think you hear a lot of these stories, working at this Erie City Mission, being a pastor, um, doing leadership training one-on-one -on -one with people. You hear mm -hmm. all of their stories, right? Mm -hmm. so yes. I think if you have time to tell one more quick story, one of my yeah. favorite stories that you tell is um, when you guys lived in Edinburgh and it was winter and you were driving. Oh, yes. You know who yes. I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah. And I love that because it ties into the purpose. Mm-hmm. In in this story uh, was early on in in our ministry. I it was we had just bought our house. It was seventeen degrees out, it, which it's pretty cold in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, which is like in, right in that snow belt. Uh, There's about a foot of snow on the ground. It was late at night. I took a friend home. He was helping us remodel, you know, repaint our house and everything. And uh, it was about one in the morning, and I was taking a back way home, and. Uh, came across this bridge and thought I saw something, but I, you know, it was late and I was fairly delirious. So I just kept driving, uh, got to the stop sign and really felt like uh, if ever I could describe God telling me to do something, it was turn around and go back. And I decided to pay attention to that and turned around. And when I got back to the bridge, there was a, a guy laying in the snow. He was, uh, there. Uh, I don't know how long he had been there. I, at the time, was driving the smart car of the 90s, the Geo Metro, <laughs> uh, and uh, it becomes important in the story because when I get out in, and talk to the guy, he turns out to be like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, so <laughs> hard time getting in my car. Right. But when I said, hey, are you okay? He said, just leave me alone. And, you know, I wasn't going to leave this gentleman out there and I walked over and stuck out my hand and he uh, he was pretty upset with me because he wanted to be left alone uh, and he realized I wasn't going to leave uh, so he got in my car and we started driving he told me where he lived and I I said hey you know I don't know what you think about this but I really feel like God told me to turn around and come back and when I did that's when I found you and he bursted in into tears this college student uh which kind of took me off guard and i was like man what is going on and he said well i started drinking tonight to get drunk enough to kill myself hmm. and i said i he said i i came out here to lay down in front of a car to do it and your car was going to be that car and, and one of the first things that went through my mind was well geo metro would never kill you <laughs> Uh, but I did, I didn't say that, it didn't right. seem appropriate at the time. Uh, and, 
uh, I, I said, well, can you tell me what's going on in your life? That So we got to his house. He told me that he wanted to, he was an animation major and he wanted to w- do work for Veggie Tales for Big Idea Productions. And I was like, man, that's awesome. And that's like a pretty high goal. And he told me about his family history and where he was at and a broken relationship that he experienced and why he was kind of in the tank emotionally. And, and I was just, you know, realized that something like a, a divine meeting had happened and I got to be part of it. And, and we became friends and I was like, Hey, you want to come to church with me tomorrow? Do you have time? And he said, well, I do now. And <laughs> And uh, he, we started hanging out. He got involved with a group and uh, that really helped him uh, reconnect with who he was. And he kept in his, finished up his degree in, in animation. And later that year, I get a call from one of the animation professors who was a friend of mine. And he said, this kid uh, is winning an international award. He's winning the Chuck Jones Award. And I was like, oh my gosh. Who is Chuck Jones? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was like, it, Chuck Jones, the creator of Bugs Bunny. Uh, oh, and, wow. and he kind of said it like, you idiot. Come on. But yeah. Everybody knows he that. He did, yeah, he didn't. I'd have that. to Google that too. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know. So, you know, heck. I, uh, and I was like that. And I love Bugs Bunny. I was always been a fan. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and he said, we're going to give him this award and they have awards banquet. I want you to come. And so I went and, uh, you know, I see this kid there and he's like, Oh, the news is here. That's weird. You know, like he doesn't know what's going on. He, they present him with this award and they get Chuck Jones on the phone and this Chuck Jones talks to this kid. And, and, you know, he, this kid obviously knows who Chuck Jones is and he's (laughs) like freaking out. Uh, and it was so awesome. And then they started, reading these job offers from different companies in animation and one was pixar and one was dreamworks and one was disney yeah. and one of the job offers was from big idea productions oh. uh the creators of veggie tales and two weeks later this kid speaks with the vice president of veggie tales from a big idea and they uh, they give him a job and he has animation work and a lot of their uh, videos, including their full length feature film, Jonah, uh, which when it came to our area, he got to present his talk about his work before they showed the movie at the movie theater. So it was really cool. Uh, and he went on to work for uh, Jimmy Neutron and he has animation work in in uh, uh, Box Trolls. Mm-hmm. In Cor in Cor- Coraline, yeah. uh, which were were big hits. So, I mean, just the the thread of of purpose that you know when somebody's created for something and and realizes realizes it and puts the work in and then you know pursues that passion, you know, and then how important it is for us uh, in in the process to intersect people because we have something to offer, you know, and I was a small part of that whole process, but, uh, you know, I got to go out and, and get a tour. He gave me a tour of the big idea production studios in Chicago, uh, when he was working there. So it was really cool. Yeah. That's fascinating. I know, you know, a lot of our listeners, I think are along this line of, okay, I think I need to be doing something next. I'm not sure what the next step is not sure how to step out. I'm kind of scared Mm -hmm. or I have stepped out and I'm still scared. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know what, (laughs) being a coach, yeah, I know that you guys ask a lot of questions. You don't necessarily give answers. So what kind of Mm -hmm. questions would you be asking if you're at that point? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I would go back a little bit with them and say, well, talk to me about, you know, what is it that you love doing? Like what, you know, so, so give me some of those Uh, and talk to me about what you've done in the past that has, that you've really connected with and found value in. And what are the things that you've always wanted to do? And, and that kind of helps me set up a, you know, 
you know, sort of a timeline. So I kind of take this story and a point thing into coaching and like, tell me your story and let's work together to find your point in a sense, your purpose. Um, how, how are we beginning to see things connecting and really getting to the root of, okay, what is it about certain things that you did connect with or didn't connect with and why? And it really begin to investigate together. All right. What does that mean for what you're doing now? Because sometimes the things that are keeping us stuck in our story uh, aren't apparent until, you know, we get some outside help to kind of shift it, change our perspective, ask us questions that we hadn't thought of yet and start to peel away some of those layers so we can see reality for what it is. And it, you know, you might be doing the right thing, but you're in the, the wrong job within the right industry or you know you might be right where you need to be you just need to you know uh, keep pushing and and it, it'll you're on the right path and you're doing the right thing it's just hard right now so like it sometimes people just need encouragement and they get down on themselves or mm. um, some sometimes it's like i believe in the person and they have to borrow my belief in them to get them through this awkward stage, you know? Right. Uh, like your animation friend, for sure. Yeah. 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 That outside perspective is so huge. You just get that tunnel vision sometimes, and and, and you start yeah. telling yourself uh, a false story about yourself and your circumstances. And yeah. So we need people like you or others to speak in truth to the mm -hmm. story or different perspective to the story, I guess. Yeah. And that's like uh, it sometimes your mind, depending on how you think about things, your mind can go to a negative place and start beating yourself up. And then you get kind of stuck in that pattern. And sometimes those thought processes uh, become reality when we, when we stay on them too long. Um, and, uh, and then we're, then we confirm our story. Oh, well, see, it didn't work out when, if you could have interrupted the pattern and started telling yourself a different story, um, you might have had a different outcome. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Andy, thank you so much for your time and your talents and telling these stories. We appreciate it. Well, you guys, I, I appreciate you so much. And helping people tell their story is such a huge thing. And you guys do that so well. Thank you. That, I mean, I think that's our passion because we have mm. seen the importance of why People need to discover their story so they can be living mm -hmm. it out. And it's not about it's not about us, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Andy, if someone wanted to connect with you, where they, where can they find you? Uh, well, uh, you can go to my website, andykirkcoaching.com. Um, I had a really great designer for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> mm. uh, thank you. Slash Jess. photographer. It, Who yeah, apparently can't exactly, spell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, or uh, Andy Kirk coaching uh, Facebook page uh, mm -hmm. where you can find a lot of the content and videos uh, in both places, but uh, can call they... me and set up a, a discovery session. So. Yeah. And can they get the book there or where do they get the book? Oh, uh, you can go to Amazon to get the book. Um, go yeah. to the Amazon. Yeah. I'm kidding. Go to the, That's a long way to go, go to the Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your local distributing fa uh, <laughs> factory nice. uh no if you go to amazon you can get the book there uh and and i can send you that link cool perfect we'll put that in the show notes too so people have access to that awesome awesome well thanks again andy we appreciate your time thank you so much guys but don't don't all right that's <laughs> it <laughs> explore dream discover that's what we're all about here, sharing people's stories and engaging with each other. Well, we hope you found this conversation helpful and encouraging. We'd love to keep in touch. We just started a Facebook group where you can connect on a more personal level. It's called the Square One Lounge. You can find it by going to our website, squareoneshow.com, and at the top, just click on Lounge. Thanks to our editor, Paul McCosco. And until next time, this is David and Jessica Lewis. Enjoy your week.
This episode is brought to you by Jessica Lewis Creative. If you're looking for a voiceover artist for your phone system, maybe a corporate video, or as an intro for your podcast, let me know. I'd love to help. JessicaLewisCreative.com.